I will touch on this. This is one, one of the topics I want to keep for the three of you guys. And uh, I, I, have, I was in conversation today and we were talking about um, free agents that have that the bills have just been. I mean, Kent, you and I are in the same boat, man. Our, our bills and lines just wasn't a destination to come and play. Right. Uh, and the bills have have not been a destination to come and play for quite some time. Nobody was looking at it. And if you were, you were only going there for the bag. You're going for the, for the money and then you're out of the league. That was just what it is. Well, so when we got a, 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 a star player, we're like, man, that's, that's a guy that's at the twilight of it. He's at the end of his career. So we're not yeah. having it. So my question to you three gentlemen. Since 2010. Five bills, free agents that helped turn this franchise around that's that because normally one player can come to the team have a little success and other teams other guys look at them like okay so they're doing something over there let me head let me head on over there so are there five free agent bills players that you guys see that stand out that that turn this this bills franchise around uh and it'll be a round room so uh we can collectively do this as a group and who you feel you guys uh, are the top five so I'll start with Brock. Uh, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Um, so what turned this franchise around, air quotes, it's got to be somebody within the last like three years. Otherwise, yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> three years only. Okay. 2010 and, and whatever. The, the franchise wasn't turned around. So that's where my <laughs> limitation was. Uh, I think the earliest, well, okay. The earliest ones I got on here are 2017 with the uh, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer one. With okay. the safety duo, okay. Nice. So that's they're they're on there. That's that was a duo. They kind of came over that same year. Um, obviously, I got a couple linemen with uh, Feliciano and Morse. Uh, okay. Both those two guys. Um, you know, Klein is in that mix as well for me. And uh, okay, Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley was actually, I think, a, a very at at first. I kind of. Um, I don't know. I'm look politically correct way of saying it. Like I, I shat on it. Like I was not looking forward to seeing Beasley in a, in a Bills uniform, thinking he could do much. Uh, but he proved me wrong completely. Mm -hmm. a lot tougher than I thought he was. Uh, they started to gel. He was that receiver that uh, Allen could count on, and uh, he proved me wrong. And to me, that it was probably one of the best pickups they've had in the last little while from a developmental and somebody that Allen can count on because that was so important from a a, a chemistry standpoint mm. you know I know Diggs you know and him have that uh, bromance and stuff but but Beasley really sort of brought everything together for me I, I that's a solid list I, I'm mm. surprised you didn't, you didn't want to go further back because I I'll give you one name and then I'll <laughs> and I'm gonna pass it over <laughs> to Kent I'll pass it over to Kent I'll give you one name because sometimes it takes one it only takes one to kind of get <laughs> Buffalo on the map. So I, I, you, you're gonna dismiss Mario Williams. Mario Williams coming over the Bills, big, <laughs> huge, hundred million dollar contract, right now with Mario Williams on the squad. We have Marcel Darius. We, we were a top defense. We were getting after that quarterback with Mike Pitton. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we had Jim Schwartz as our defensive coordinator. I'm surprised you guys left him out, but I digress. I'm gonna move over to Kent. Kent. Five free agents that you feel like kind of got the ball rolling to get Buffalo back on the map again. So you kind of mentioned pretty much everybody that I was going to say anyway. So I'll, I'll just keep it to the two big ones for me, which is sure. that safety duo. Okay. Um, and, and here's why. They weren't brought in as big money free agents. They weren't brought in to be the superstars like the Mario Williams contract was. where like, look, we've got to turn things around. Uh, by this point, the ball was already rolling. Things were already moving in the right direction. The bills were already starting to trend upwards. Uh, but that pickup of, of those two safeties really gave the team, uh, they gave them something that, that helped show what their foundation was. So they're not, they're not by themselves foundational players, but they helped show what the team was trying to do on defense and what they're trying to do from a roster building standpoint. Because they're not going out and trying to find superstars for every position. They're trying to find guys that are going to play well at every position. I like that, it. And I know you're going to hate the comparison just because of who it is. But the, the Patriots have had that blueprint for years. Building out from, from the middle of their, their team and yep. making sure that their worst players are better than the worst players on any team. Their mid-range players are better than the mid-range players on every team. They might not have the best superstars on their team. 
But the middle of their roster is stronger than the middle of everybody else's roster. And that's what's helped the Patriots last as long as they have as a franchise and being as good as they have for as long as they have. Pickups like Boyer, that shows that the Bills are building that way. They're trying to make sure that their core group of players are at the very worst good players, guys that you can count on to go out there every week and not stink the place up. And yeah, you've said it before. We've seen franchises where people go out on the field and stick the place up. Right, so right, right. Making sure that you limit the amount of guys doing that is a huge deal. And I think those those two guys really show that the that the Bills are going to that stage of roster building. We're done trying to build up the bottom of the defense. Now we've got to build up the middle and keep ourselves going so that we can have a franchise that's sustainable long term. I I I, I kind of like it, and mm-hmm. I'm, I was hoping that you guys would would bring me back. And, and you guys are in the, in the recent stages, but I get it. You're not a Bills fan, so you're, you're going to just well, – they're irrelevant. What, since you guys have been relevant, now I'll know who you guys are. But back in 2013, 14, 15, hey, nobody's listen, paying attention. Hopefully, listen. Pep, can you bring us back? Well, look, you know, when I think about the Buffalo Bills over the last 40 years, let alone the last 10, All right. since, since their Super Bowl days, the defense really hasn't been a problem. They've they've been they've always fielded a very competitive, aggressive defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, twenty years of Tom Brady, it, it may not show on paper, but they've always been aggressive. They've always drafted fairly well on the on the on the defensive end. Um, but it's been their offense that that struggled. And you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick came in. He was probably one of my favorite FAs that came into to Buffalo because he stabilized a team that was like zero and eight at one point. So. You know, he came in. He, was he flashy? No, but he his shelf life on every team is like a year and a half. He did what he had to do in Buffalo. I really like the Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, pickup at the time. Yeah, but there's one okay. player right now that comes to mind, and Brock mentioned it. Like when I think about Buffalo's success, it's it's got to be just recent because they had been. I mean, they had they had such a long playoff drought outside of Tyrod Taylor's one year. Right. It's Stephon Diggs. He he made them legitimate last year. He gave them what they haven't had since, I don't know, uh, Eric Moulds. I mean, they haven't had a deep threat like him in forever. And he, what do you have? 100, 100 catches. Yeah, 127 aggressive, catches. Yep. Runs great routes. Wanted to be there. Uh, you could see the emotion after that Chiefs game, him on the sideline. That's a guy you want. And he's built some chemistry. So when you talk about free agents, I mean, I'm going <laughs> to, I can't, I can't go that far back because their defense has always been pretty good. But, uh, for me, it's Diggs. It starts and stops with Diggs. He's he's made them legit. Well, let me Diggs, help you guys out. Diggs came to Buffalo because of other free agents that were there. Like Diggs is not going to the Buffalo five years ago. Now we traded for Diggs. We brought him there. We brought him there. We said, I mean, right. he tweeted something, and that was Bean's opening to say, "Oh, wait a minute now, gotcha, right?" And and that's how it materialized. But I'm gonna stick with Mary Williams being one of them. Uh, I know this is at the end of this individual's career, but it started to kind of bring some noise. I, I, I feel bad to say, but I got to bring Tio. When Tio had his stint in Buffalo, um, he he was he put some numbers up oh, with Trent sure. Edwards as quarterback, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, you you start bringing in, then you you got your Jordan Poirier that came in, but Lashawn McCoy, although it was a free agent, we, we traded for him, but Lashawn McCoy kind of got the ball rolling, right? Oh, Lashawn's over there. Okay, this is interesting, right? Uh, um, is and then, a free agent, or was he traded for? He was traded for because we traded uh, – what's my guy? Uh, the, the legend of Kiko, Kiko Alonso. Um, so <laughs> that's, that, really that's how that materialized. But uh, I found this as, as interesting because the Bills have been so mediocre at best for so long. And I, I say that very lightly. And it's just nice to see them back on top. <laughs>